From the noise, it's the Cube. Covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com and welcome back to SiliconANGLE TV's live wall-to-wall -wall coverage from VMworld 2015. Uh, excited to have a, a practitioner uh, on the segment, uh, Bob Dussault, who's the Information Security Officer with Hallmark Business Connection, and also we've got Greg Smith, who's the Senior Director of Product and Technical Marketing from Nutanix. Gentlemen, first time on theCUBE, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Thank you. Yep. All right, so, so Bob, uh, let, let's start with you first. Sure. Uh, tell us a little bit about just your, your background uh, sure. and what your role is uh, sure. at Hallmark. Well, my background, I've uh, been doing this about 30 years now. Uh, I'm an infrastructure guy from way back. Um, and uh, Hallmark brought me in uh, to work at the B2B arm of the uh, organization to bring in some, uh, maybe a little bit of forward thinking in the infra uh, infrastructure space. Uh, on top of that, uh, information security is extremely important to us, and so I take a, a, a critical look at that as well. All right, Greg, just for your first time on the program, uh, yes. we, we had your CEO on this morning, yes, Raj, you know, uh, you know, regular on our program. Uh, what, what, what's your role with Nutanix? Uh, I help with the product and technical marketing organization. So our responsibilities help produce some of the the solutions guides, reference architectures that hopefully our customers use when deploying their enterprise applications on Nutanix. All right, so, so Bob, in, in your open, you said that you were brought in to help kind of do some, some new things, help clean up, uh, you know, I, I guess, you know, infrastructure a lot of times has held back uh, the operation of IT, and, uh, you know, boy, security is always a top of mind issue, even if it's not necessarily the top funded item. Uh, so maybe, maybe we can talk a little bit about what the infrastructure looked like sure. before and what some of the major pain points were that you were dealing with. Sure, like most infrastructures, uh, they, uh, uh, that grow organically, uh, they tend to become somewhat convoluted, complex, and difficult to manage. Uh, they're not very scalable, they're very expensive, and uh, the staff required to maintain them has to be very focused. Uh, we, you know, at, at Hallmark Business Connections are really, and it's not unusual, but we're, we're under mandate to kind of do more with less. And so one of the things we needed to do was kind of untangle that ball of twine that had evolved over uh, the course of about eight or nine years, uh, the traditional three-tier infrastructure, compellent, HP, et cetera, and, and figure out a way to make that more scalable, uh, make it more web-friendly. And this concept of DevOps, uh, which we all talk about so much, uh, how, do we, how do we leverage the concepts of DevOps uh, that uh, would, would hold back our development agility, right? The, the development staff have, have become very agile over the, the last several years, but infrastructure can't keep up with that typically. So how do we kind of reconcile that so that we can uh, uh, realize our dream of that, that, that DevOps value chain? And so that's why I was brought in. All right, so uh, you, you mentioned a couple of the products. Can, can you paint a picture for us? So, you know, what's the IT staff look like kind of before? Sure. And you know, were, were you expecting to do some organizational changes as part of uh, you know, moving to the new, yeah, I mean, DevOps isn't yes. necessarily something that you, your typical storage guy you know, has been doing for years. So you know, that, tell us about that. That's yeah. exactly right. So uh, when I arrived uh, about three years ago, uh, HBC had uh, you know, your, your typical technology stack. We had a, a, a virtualization engineer that, that was very compute focused. We had a network engineer who was very network focused. We had a storage engineer very storage focused. And then we had a handful of, of ITIL help desk kind of support staff. And what I, had, uh, what I had presented when I came in was, why don't we try to take these, these, these folks and move them more towards a service delivery, a service management kind of uh, platform uh, where we are uh, really trusted brokers of IT services. How do we do that? How do we show value, business value, uh, with the IT infrastructure? Because you know, in, in the end, uh, you know, the traditional IT shop is becoming rapidly irrelevant and businesses can take their <laughs> IT dollars and, and move them outside of that shop. And so how do we as an IT staff show value uh, and, and maybe even take it to the point where we're a revenue center instead of a uh, cost center? All right, so, so Bob, uh, you know, let, let's get into kind of the, the transition you went through. I mean, did you sweep the floor, or just build a new data center, throw everything else that you have, or were there some initial use cases and projects sure. that, uh, 
uh, you know, helped you move, uh, I'm assuming Nutanix was part of the solution, so. Absolutely, so yeah, obviously we don't throw away what we have. Uh, you know, you hear it said all along, you know, you have legacy, legacy has to be retained. We have a lot of capital tied up in, in uh, infrastructure and uh, it's not going to go away until the book value is gone and then probably sometime after that. So what we did was we looked at uh, certain technologies that we thought were going to help us you know, shrink our footprint, uh, help us improve performance, help us streamline management, and then we look for use cases where that might be relevant so that we could get some minimal investment from the organization to try to try, you know, try them out in, in, in kind of a uh, experimentation process. Sorry, can you give us a couple of examples? Absolutely, so initially we looked at VDI. VDI is a really great fit for hyper-converged infrastructure and, and because I wanted to bring that in, I, I, I looked at that first. The problem is we didn't have an appetite for that. We have a lot of uh, unique workloads and so it wasn't a really good fit. Uh, the management came to me in the, in the fall of 2013 and said, you know what, we want to do something around analytics. We want to do something around the data that we have in-house uh, show some efficacy of the programs that we manage for our clients around employee engagement, customer engagement, wellness engagement, and, and use that in the sales process to try to you know, drive some revenue. And so we need to do that, and we need to do that in a controlled way, we need to do that in a way that's high performing, and so we want, a, uh, we want an infrastructure dedicated to that. And so that was my opportunity, that was my end. So at that point, we, look, we started looking at a couple of, of uh, options, and we selected Nutanix through a proof of concept, and we rolled that out in a uh, Microsoft SQL stack, BI uh, types of SQL workloads, and it, it proved out really, really well. And at the end of that, uh, I went back to our senior leadership and I said, hey look, this, this is it. This, this shows this is the future. How about we do a three year roadmap? And that's kind of what we're working against right now. All right, so, so Greg, uh, let, let's bring you into the conversation. Uh, it, it, it's interesting how Bob, uh, Bob said, you know, VDI wasn't a fit. And you know, there are those out there that say, oh, Nutanix, it, it's just that VDI company that uh, does some piece there. So, uh, you know, how much is you know, this kind of a typical example of you know, trying to get in the environment and then spread out to uh, you know, be, be a larger piece of the, the infrastructure platform? Yeah, that's a good question. I think if you go back two, maybe even three years, VDI was a, a very ideal uh, insertion point for uh, hyper-converged infrastructure like Nutanix. Because uh, it typically represented a new workload in the environment and gave them an opportunity uh, to deploy new infrastructure. Uh, today, uh, for Nutanix and perhaps for the larger hyper-converged industry, uh, VDI is still a sizable uh, portion of the workload, but it's a minority. Uh, Nutanix, today, uh, most of our business is running production uh, databases, uh, big data, a lot of collaboration like Microsoft Exchange, um, a lot of Microsoft apps, a lot of server consolidation. Uh, so today, VDI is about 30% of our workloads. It's an ideal workload in, in that it demands a lot of resilience, high performance, um, and a lot of density. But what we found is even the customers that started with the virtual desktops, whether it be VMware View or Citrix Zen Desktop, is they got comfortable with the technology, they fell in love with the efficiency and the performance, and they've expanded the hyper-converged footprint with Nutanix to run uh, some of their more uh, business critical tier one applications. So, so the other thing I'm wondering if you can comment on is it wasn't, you know, my traditional storage was just too expensive. It's, you know, agility and, uh, you know, specific organizationally how they want to do things. And, uh, you know, I, I heard very clearly, you know, we know we need to change because what we're doing just isn't working for us, but, you know, and just going through kind of the standard refresh cycle of upgrading what you have. So, uh, you know, do, do you need that change agent inside? Uh, is that that's pretty typical and, you know, maybe comment on some of those other well, aspects. Yeah, yeah, the first thing you said is uh, the cost. I yeah. think that if you go into a uh, new tanks infrastructure or hyper-converged looking to save money uh, off, out of the bat, um, you may not always meet your goals. I think the real savings comes on the financial side on the dramatically reduced operational expenses, the dro drop in those over time. Uh, the primary reason people are adopting hyper-converged infrastructure is like you said, it's for the agility. The, the mere fact that I can stand up infrastructure not in weeks or days, but in hours. And so what we're able to do in Nutanix and what we did for Hallmark is in, in, in the same day that we're able to deliver uh, converged infrastructure, they can start provisioning workloads that same day. And so if it's VDI or production of database, we just collapse, we really consolidate that, uh, that time to value for organizations. 
All right, so Bob, I'm wondering, can you give us, do you have any concrete examples of kind of life before and life after uh, rolling in the Nutanix, either from you know, the infrastructure standpoint or the, the operational or organizational standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. We've got a couple of really concrete examples that I like to show. Uh, the very first example is, uh, you know, we talked a little bit here about you're not necessarily going to realize the financial impact directly when you buy the equipment, but what you do find is that as you move workloads from the traditional three-tier infrastructure to the Nutanix, infrastructure, your footprint gets dramatically reduced, and so uh, our co-location costs begin to drop dramatically. Uh, we are going to save over the, the next three years roughly $2,200 per rack that we reduce per month. That's real numbers. We, we expect a, a return of about 65% over those three years. Uh, the next piece we saw from a performance standpoint was uh, during the, the proof of concept around the, the analytics, we had uh, the development team come to us and say, hey look, we're trying to do these continuous integration builds. We, we're trying to do 12 builds a day, but these builds are now starting to take almost two hours. Uh, and, and so one stops, the next one starts. There's not a lot of time for development. And so what we did was we moved that, that build workload um, yeah, which was using Final Builder on a .NET C Sharp application. We moved that, no changes, just a, a vMotion into the Nutanix environment, and we went from about an hour and 40 minute build time to 22 minutes. It's about 67%, or 76%, I think it was, that we saw in terms of improvement in that workload. Well, that, that's great. So, Bob, we all know in IT, first time you do something, it doesn't necessarily go as smooth as you want, or you know, basically if I have hindsight, uh, I, I've learned something. So for your peers out there that are looking at a solution like this, you know, what surprised you or what would you do different uh, you know, if, if you had, had to, if you're going into this for the first time? Sure. I'll tell you what didn't surprise me, uh, and that was that it just worked. Yeah. Because when I did my research, I knew that this was going to work. I just felt it. Um, so what we learned was it really was that simple to instantiate a cluster of Nutanix. And what really took us the, the longest was to get people on board with the idea that it was that simple. So if I had to do this over again, uh, and I am going to do this over again, uh, what I would do is I would prep the engineering staff a little bit better. I would get them involved a little bit earlier in the architecture discussion so that they were kind of stakeholders in the process. Uh, because after all, if your engineers aren't really on board with, with the architecture, it's not going to succeed. So, uh, you know, you, you handle security also for, uh, you know, HPC. So how, how does, does Nutanix change the security discussion? Uh, you know, what, what, what's the impact of changing your infrastructure? Well, short term, it really doesn't change the security discussion. But what it does do with uh, some of the capabilities that are inherent with, with uh, Nutanix, the... Um, uh, and I'm, I'm going to butcher the, the marketing term for it, but self-encrypting drives uh, is probably going to help us in terms of performance. Today we encrypt our at-rest data using Microsoft technologies inherent within the SQL stack, uh, and we do endpoints through you know, BitLocker, those kinds of things. I think what this is going to allow us to do uh, is, is, is take security to the, to, the, to the next level, the same way we are with infrastructure. We're going to start looking at it in terms of uh, software defined. Everything we do now is with an eye towards software defined. If we can't script it, if we can't monitor it in an automated fashion, then we don't want to invest in it. Yeah, and I guess some of that goes back to your comment about DevOps. So, Absolutely. you know, talk a little bit about, I mean, how, how were, were you involved with DevOps before you came there? How, how do you kind of, yeah. it, it, it's really more of a mindset and, yeah. uh, you know, not, not specific, there's tools involved typically, but, you know, it, for, for those that aren't familiar, to share your DevOps experience. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. I, you know, I've, I've been doing what we call DevOps today long before it had a name. Uh, I was with a company called Plato Learning years ago, educational software company, SaaS provider, and we knew back then that in order to make a transition from a client-server environment with a uh, perpetual license to a software as a service, that you had to change your mindset. And uh, we knew that development and operations needed to work together. And so the then CTO invited me to move over from operations into development, where I managed a development team for about five years. And it was through that experience that I started to see that there's a value chain 
in getting uh, the, the software being developed out into the infrastructure. And, and how you uh, remove the obstacles in that value chain is what differentiates you from your competitors. And that really is the DevOps value chain. Now what you said earlier about, well, there are tools involved and there are you know, skills involved, but it, it is a mindset, right? It's about how do we recognize the constraints and how do we remove those constraints in the most efficient way possible using those tools and those skills. Yeah, so, so Greg, I, I have to say, I haven't heard kind of the DevOps story from, uh, from Nutanix. I obviously am familiar with kind of the heritage of the company, web scale yeah. architectures, and simplicity should help enable uh, some of that, but you know, how does DevOps fit into uh, kind of the deployment and customer engagement from a Nutanix standpoint? Yeah, I think, I think at least three different ways. One is, by the simplicity of the platform, we really remove a lot of the complexity and help break down those silos within organizations. Whether it be a reduction in the need for specialized storage skills, where the virtualization team, the business apps team, can work directly with the infrastructure team. Um, uh, two is the exposure of uh, uh, a, a set of RESTful APIs. So the entire Nutanix solution is built upon a very open, extensible, uh, RESTful APIs. So we do that. Then uh, largely just simplicity. It's the, the idea that I can provision infrastructure very, very quickly so that I can put it in the hands of my developers uh, such that they can start developing applications and move them through that life cycle very, very quickly without having to go through multiple teams and get buy-offs as I go from uh, staging, pre-production to production. All right. So, so Bob, we're here at VMworld. First of all, have you been to the show before? I have not. All right, but uh, you, you know, your, your company, your VMware customer? We are. All right, so tell us, you know, from, from your standpoint, uh, you know, what, what's the experience of being both a Nutanix and a VMware customer? Uh, you know, it, 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 I'm sure if you've read some of the industry magazines, you, you, you've been a watcher of the industry for a while, um, you know, you, your take on that, that engagement. Yeah, so really, uh, we are uh, heavily invested in VMware, and it, it certainly uh, is on our roadmap for the, for the future in terms of our production workloads. And it was one of the determining factors of us selecting uh, a hyper-converged provider. They had to support VMware, uh, ESX, uh, and, and, and Nutanix did that. And, and they did it in such a way that it didn't invade the, the, the vSphere uh, uh, API, um, and that was appealing to me. Uh, we are going to continue to use uh, VMware. Uh, we are going to continue to look at alternatives uh, from a cost perspective. Um, what Nutanix is doing around allowing you to move applications around within that, that sphere, if you will, uh, is exciting to us, and so um, we just are nothing but excited about that. Great, and, and the, the, the last question I have for you is, how, how does the cloud environment fit with you? Mm -hmm. do you know, do you mm -hmm. consider Nutanix an environment? Is that you know, part of the cloud strategy? Do you, do you work with the public cloud? Just how does, you know, you, yeah. you've got background in cloud, so uh, you know, uh, how, how does that fit in in your organization? Well, I, you know, I think it absolutely is cloud, right? Uh, what we do today, I would refer to as a private cloud. Uh, our traditional infrastructure was not. It was very much a traditional uh, infrastructure. But what we do today is private cloud, and it's service-oriented, and it's all of those things. We do have a, a, a selection of applications that are cloud-enabled. Uh, we, we are looking at moving some of our workloads into the public cloud. We're looking at perhaps using uh, Azure for dev test. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're key partners with Microsoft as well. So there are lots of opportunities, uh, particularly around the area of dev test and, and even for performance um, uh, capacity kind of spikes. Yeah, uh, Greg, you know, uh, you and I have talked for a few years, just some of the yes. terminology out there we talk, you know, what is cloud, you know, what is software defined, hyperconverged, you know, heck, we have a term server SAN. When server SAN. Nutanix first came out, it was the no SAN company, so even though you guys are the, the market leader in the space, you know, our terminology doesn't match. But what, what are you hearing from customers? You know, what, what, what's, the, what's the driving conversations that, that's important for, uh, you know, the, the IT staff and the C-suite uh, of customers that you talk to? I mean, what our customers tell us increasingly is that they need IT to really work for the business. That they're spending too much time, uh, too much money, not serving the business, but maintaining the infrastructure. So increasingly they went, like Bob said, they want infrastructure that just works. And so when Deeridge was on the show earlier and he talked about invisible infrastructure, I mean, he, he really meant that infrastructure that can elevate IT so that 
Bob and his colleagues can really focus on the applications without doing a lot of care and feeding of the infrastructure. And I think that's, that, that's a value proposition. Those are techno technological attributes that, that appeal not just for the practitioner, practitioner, but to all levels of the business. All right, uh, Bob, uh, I just want to give you the final word. Uh, to your, your first time here at the show. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, what, 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 what excites you about being at the show? Uh, what advice would you give to your peers uh, kind of at this state of the industry? Well, I tell you, what really excites me about this show and others is, is just the uh, concentration of intelligence. The smart people, the people that are innovative, it's, it spreads. It's like, uh, it, it's like a happy disease, if you will. And, and what I would advise folks who come to these things is to absolutely keep an open mind. Don't come in with a predisposition for a certain technology or other. Uh, just go in and listen. And don't be afraid to get your badge scanned and, and to listen to a spiel. That's what you're here for. If you don't open your eyes to what's being uh, put in front of you, you're never going to know what the next big thing is. And I'll have to tell you that uh, selecting Nutanix and moving in the direction that we've done has been nothing but great for us. And we would have never done that had I not been to a conference similar to this and listened. Yeah, well, Bob, thank you so much for, for coming and sharing. Greg, thank you for thank joining you. us. Yeah, I, I can tell you, just to reiterate what you said, uh, I was at the Nutanix uh, .next conference in Miami, and uh, in many ways the vibe reminded me of VMworld. Mm -hmm. It's people excited, people contributing, uh, and uh, you know, exciting times to learn in the industry. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll be right back with lots more coverage here from VMworld 2015. Thanks for watching.